Hi, I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another episode of Out of the Trenches, which is our Great War special series where I answer all of you fantastic viewers' questions about World War I. Now, I usually sit in the Chair of Wisdom in Berlin, where we have the studio, and answer their questions. But these two guys came up to Stockholm to shoot some special episodes, and we thought we'd shoot some Out of the Trenches, so I'm sitting in my apartment in the Chair of Madness, much as I was last time, and I'm still going to answer your questions. And I'm not going to wing it. I actually wrote some down this time. I know that's cheating. Don't write to me about it. I already know you don't like it when I do that. Right. The Winged Hussar writes, Ooh. I have a question. Did any side during World War I actually research the tactics and situations during the U.S. Civil War to try and gain some kind of advantage? Since the U.S. Civil War had many battles that had trenches dug. Well, oh mighty Winged Hussar, during the Civil War, all of the major European powers sent military observers, and the reports often made it back to the high command. But the war and the reports seemed too alien and really too exotic to be considered for preparing their own strategies. The military observers were often actually really amazed by the scale of the U.S. Civil War and how quickly it escalated, and with things that would become, unfortunately, all too familiar in World War I, like barbed wire and trenches and submarines, and actually both sides uh, worked with submarines even though they thought they were illegal. Both sides wrote, nah, it's an illegal weapon, it's cheating, but they still both worked on them. But also larger things like telegraph communications, linking, linking, linking? Telegraph communications, linking, widening theaters of war, and making large-scale strategy and tactics possible in a way that they'd never been before. Now, you have to remember though, at that time, the 1860s or so, wars were still fought in the more traditional sense in Europe. If you look at uh, the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, the Franco-Prussian War of 1870-71, even the Crimean War back in the 1850s, those were all major engagements that were won with single decisive battles in the traditional sense. And if you look at the British Empire and the colonial powers who were used to fighting wars in the colonies, they weren't fighting modern war. Colonial war, as you know, was completely different. Actually, the American Civil War was not the best example where the First World War generals could have learned through hindsight. That would be the Russo-Japanese War in 1904 and 1905, which also had trenches and machine guns, and all that was much more recent. But as we all know, they didn't learn. Uh, Jim Bubbly, or Jim Boobly. Jim Boobly? What should we call him? Jim Boobly. Jim Boobly writes, Great series. Thank you, Jim Boobly. I have a question for Out of the Trenches. Was there ever a time when an airship fought another airship? Probably impractical, but that would be an awesome fight. That's true, that'd be an awesome fight. Uh, I sadly have no knowledge of this, but it's an interesting question. Now, everybody knows about Zeppelins, but other nations had airships too during the war. The British used airships effectively to counter the U-boat campaign, the German U-boat campaign. But they were way behind the Zeppelins in design and technology until later in the war, when in many ways they were actually superior. True story. Uh, as weapons on board, they might have Lewis guns or bombs, depth charges, and the crew would carry rifles sometimes to snipe mines that were spotted, you know, which is pretty cool from this guy. They were great for having with convoys as spotters as well. During the entire war, only one ship was sunk while being escorted by an airship. Uh, the French army had a few airships that were used from 1915 for nighttime bombing raids, but eventually they were turned over to the Navy since they kept getting destroyed. The Italians used them too as scouts and bombers. But okay, I'm going on. The actual question, does anybody out there know the answer? Was there ever a time when like a German airship fought a British airship? I don't know. Were there airship to airship battles? Tell us in the comments below. Fish and chimps, and that's fish like the band with a PH, and chimps as in, you know, chimps. Fish and Chimps writes, These generals had some fancy facial hair. What were the shaving requirements of the different countries involved? If in the trenches, were you still expected to shave daily? Okay, I don't know very much about the shaving requirements of each of the varying nations, but the leaders and generals of all of the nations certainly sported some serious facial hair. Can we get a montage? Okay, ready for a montage? Rennenkampf, Konrad von Hotzendorf, Enver Pasha, General Ruski, Luigi Cadorna, Joseph Joffre, Sir Douglas Haig, um, let's see, uh, oh yeah, Serbian General Pitar Bojevic, 
that's pretty much most of the European nations. Uh, if I left somebody out, sorry. Anyhow, one thing about the war, men in the trenches, they began shaving closely fairly often because gas masks do not fit well over beards and mustaches. They leak. And choosing between shaving and inhaling poison gas is a fairly easy choice. And when the men returned home, still clean shaven, it became the popular fashion at home as well. Uh, Michael Gardner writes, I was thinking a good side video would be an introduction to the nations in the war. I am thinking as a teacher of American high school students. We're so far away culturally and geographically, the student who has even heard of the Austro-Hungarian Empire is rare even among students who like history. But even still, all of the common major powers are so different now than they were a hundred years ago. It could help to have individual video on the major powers. What was their history? What was their government like? Their culture? Their reputation? What were their war goals? How did that change throughout the war? That kind of thing. An excellent idea, Michael. Uh, as you may have seen, we've already done some specials about a few countries involved in the war. Italy, Poland, South Africa, I know that. And we will indeed cover all of the major powers in the future. We should maybe have already, but you know, we still got time. Uh, actually, if you want to see something about how a European power joined the war, I changed pages. If you want to see something about how a European power joined the war, you can click here for our episode about Italy. This time is... <laughs> Okay, okay, fine. I, you can click here for our episode about Italy. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, now, I really like that, like you, so many teachers watch and enjoy our shows, and we get letters from students, and we get comments from teachers, which is great. And if any of you out there know some teachers, especially history teachers, who don't watch our show, please recommend us to them. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and all of your dreams will come true, even the dirty ones. See you next time.